All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the first lecture of Module 5. Um, I hope you're doing well. We only have one module left. The final exam will only cover topics in Module 5. Okay. So let me get started. And we're going to be solving uh, quadratic equations. Okay. So this is an example of a quadratic equation. Okay. Now, this one here, we can solve it using factoring. I'm going to do that first. OK, this is called the difference of two squares. We're going to use factoring. Remember the term conjugates. Remember that exactly the same applies here. So the factors of, of the difference of two squares, and we call it a two squares because this is a square, and four is a perfect square, okay? And so it turns, it factors into two conjugates, okay? So, and then you set them equal to zero and you solve for X. So the solution set of this, that is the numbers that when you replace X with will equal zero, the equation equals zero, is plus or minus two. Now we can also use the same approach. Sorry, we can use the same equation using a different approach. For instance, if you, this is what you have, then what you can do is isolate the square, x square, and then from here, you can take the square root property. And remember this gives you plus or minus. So there it is, plus or minus two. This is just another way of doing the same thing. Okay. All right. So that's just the first example. Let's move on to something else. Um, this is a more general approach. Suppose you have a quadratic equation uh, of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Here's an example of one. Okay. Now in this case, we cannot use the square root property. We're lucky enough that we can still factor these so we can solve them. And so when you solve for x, you get plus uh, negative 2 and negative 1. So the solution set will be negative 1, negative 2. Okay. The order in which you write those two answers does not matter. Now, what happens when we cannot factor any, uh, you know, an equation like that? What do we do? Okay. So that's what I'm going to teach you next. What do we do when we factor? We cannot factor the quadratic equations like that. And this is what we have, what we call the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. And so given any quadratic equation of this form, I'm writing something that I already wrote on the previous frame or page, whatever you want to call it, we can solve for x using this formula. And this is something you need to know. You need to memorize it. OK, this is the formula. This is the famous quadratic formula. You probably heard of this when you were in high school. Uh, this is C, OK? So notice that the formula has a square root, okay? Also notice that it, there's a plus and minus. Notice that it also has a denominator. The denominator is 2 times a, whatever this value of a is. This is the b, and this is the c, okay? So now the inside of this quadratic formula has a name. It's called a discriminant. Okay, 
So when they ask you to find the discriminant of a quadratic equation, all you have to compute is the inside of the square root. And that's it. But let me give an example of, of something that we can solve. In fact, I'm gonna use this same example here. And I'm gonna show you that I'm going to end up with this answer, but I'm going to use a quadratic formula, okay? So I'm always moving on to the next frame. So here's the, the same example that I did before. And I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve it. The first thing that I'll do is I'm going to list what A, B, and C are. In this case, A is one, B is three, and C is two, okay? Now you might say, well, what, what did you get? A equals to one. Well, here it is. Okay, now we don't write it, but you know it's there. And then I'm gonna put everything in my formula. So here it is. I'm gonna write the formula again so that you guys can see it. Okay, so here I go. So my B is three. But when you put it right next to the formula, it becomes negative three plus or minus square root B. Now it tells me that B, I have to square B. So what is B squared? Well, I have to square three. I mean, I have to square three. What is three squared? It's nine minus four times A, which is one times C, which is two over two times a, which is two times one. So notice that I'm just replacing all the variables there. Okay, so in this case is a, b, and c. So now I keep computing. Don't forget the plus or minus. Let's do the inside of the square root. In other words, let's do this discriminant. Nine minus four times one is one. I mean, four times one is four times two is eight. So inside the square root, I'm gonna have eight, nine minus eight, which is one, okay, times, divided by two times one is two. Now, this square root is too big. I don't need that much. Uh, so what do I have now? I have minus three plus or minus, what is the square root of one? One over two, okay? So now we have to be careful how we get the answer from here. So let me show you. Uh, let me erase some of this stuff. I don't need this anymore. This is just for you guys to see. You can always rewind the tape and you can actually see the what I have to here. Okay, so now, my first answer would be, notice how I label my first answer, x of one. And then my second answer will be labeled x of two. So here it is, minus three. Now pick one of them. Notice that it says plus or minus one. I'm gonna pick plus one divided by two. The other one would be negative three minus one over two. And then, of course, I have to do what is negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Sorry about that. Negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And then at the bottom, I'll do negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So notice that I, I do end up with the same answer as I did before. But again, the reason here is at the first example, this example, I was able to factor it. And in this case, I'm using the quadratic formula to also get the same answer. And you might be saying, well, can I always use the quadratic formula? And the answer is yes. You can always use the quadratic formula to solve for x. 
But here's the problem. You might, you might end up with a quadratic formula in which you cannot factor it. When you cannot factor a quadratic formula, then you have no choice but to use the quadratic formula, okay? So here's an example of one of them. So let's do that. Let's do x squared plus 2x plus 2, okay? So this is a, 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 a quadratic equation that you cannot solve by factoring. You can try, but I can tell you that you, you, you won't be able to. So we have no choice but to use the quadratic formula. So again, I'm going to list my a, a, B, and C. And I'm going to put it in. Mm -hmm. This is um, A is 1, C is 2, over 2 times 1. So this is what, this is what I, rec I recommend, that you first write the values of A, B, and C. Then maybe you want to rewrite the quadratic formula as I did here to get extra practice. And then you put everything in. So let's compute this. Okay, so this is four, two squares four, minus four times one is four, four times two is eight. So you got minus eight over two times one, which is two. So now we continue. This will be negative two plus or minus, uh, and then when I do the inside of the square root, I end up with negative four over two, okay? Now, don't forget that the square root of negative four is equal to two i. Don't forget the i, okay? So let's see what this is. So I have this answer now that contains an I. So how do I write them? How do I write the final answer? So here it is. Again, I'm going to erase this because I need the space. I want to keep everything in the same frame. Here it is. All right, so my first answer will be minus two plus two over uh, two i over two. You can simplify this, divide everything by two, and you end up with negative one plus i. The other answer would be negative two minus two i over two. And when you divide everything by two, your answer would be, oh boy, here, negative one minus i. So you have two answers. That's one of them. Here's the other one. Okay. And notice that they're conjugates. These are complex solutions. The moment that you end up with a I somewhere, that automatically becomes a complex solution. Now, what happened here? I have two answers and they don't contain an I. That's okay. They're called real solutions. When they have no eyes, they're called real solutions. When they do have an eye, like in this example, then they are a complex solution. So as you can see, this is an example where you have a quadratic equation and you cannot factor it, but you can still solve it by using the quadratic formula and when you're done, you end up with a complex, two complex solutions. That is negative, I, negative one minus i, and also negative one plus i. And you can put them into a set like this. Negative one plus i, comma, 
negative one minus i close braces. And then that's how Alex would want you to uh, enter the answers, okay? This is gonna take a lot of practice. One of the most things, important things that you have to do, of course, is to remember the formula. You have to practice it, you have to practice and practice. Now, let's do this type of example. What happens, for instance, when you have something like this? Let's say you have x plus one, all of it square equals two, let's say five, okay? This is something that first, like, what do I do with this stuff? Do I use the quadratic formula for this? Do I factor? What do I do? What do I do? So the, one of the things you want to notice is that you have a parenthesis and you have inside the parenthesis, you have x plus one and all of that is a square equals to a number. It's actually easier when it's written this way, because if it is written this way, what you can do is that you can use the a square root property. Let me let me write it here: square root property. Okay. All right. So square root property. So, so I, what does that mean? It means that I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root here, I also take the square root of the other side, but I also in the process, I generate a plus or minus. Okay? That's the first step. Take the square root of both sides. Well, what happens here on the left-hand side is when you take the square root of, a square, of something that is square, remember that the index here is 2. So these things cancel. So all you have left is x plus 1. You see how that turned out to be very convenient, okay? And on the other side, there's nothing that you can do with the square root of 5. That's it. Now, all you have to do is solve for x, which means I need to subtract it to the other side. x is by, my, is by itself. Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. This is the solution. And again, notice that you have two of them. You have this one and you also have this one you see that you have but again this is when it's set up in such a way that you take advantage of the square root the square root is not a problem the square root is something that it helps us solve problems faster easier okay Let's do another one. Let's do, let's do this. Let's do, uh, well, we did this one. Let's do another one, something similar, okay? Let's do this one. 2x plus 3 squared equals 2, 7, or negative 7, okay? So what I do is, then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So same thing, same thing. Don't forget the plus or minus, okay? And you know that this cancels, all you have left is 2x plus 3 equals 2 plus or minus. The square root of 7, negative 7, will give you an i. Let's take that i out. Let's write it like that. But at this point, remember, yes, that's what I'm teaching my students. This is my son here next to me. Um, he's eating some crackers. So now I need to solve for x. So that means that this guy is on here. So what do I have? I have 2x equals 2. Make sure that we write this negative 3 here, followed by the plus or minus, the i, the square root of 7. Okay, we're almost done, almost, not quite. We still have to divide by 2. You see? Now you're done. So x then is equals to all of this. 
and you can split them up. Here's the first solution. Okay, here's the second solution. In fact, in order for you to enter it into Alex, you have to separate them. Okay, and there you have your two. And again, why are they why are they called this time? Because they have an eye. They're called complex solutions. If they didn't have the eye, then it's real solutions. Okay. Keep in mind, guys, that all of the stuff that I'm teaching you now is going to be covered during the first module in college algebra, which is the next class that you have to take. The next class that you have to take is this, Mac 1105. And in that class, during the first two or three weeks, you're going to be doing exactly the same that we're doing now. So you better pay attention. You better learn this well. And you better make yourself proud because we are already doing it. So when you get there, it will be the second time that you see in that. Okay. So now let me talk about something here. Let me talk about something here. Let me rewrite something like this. What is what does this mean? Something as simple as this. Let me review something. We're going to talk about something that is called completing the square. As you can see, x plus 2 square is a perfect square. What do I mean by a perfect, perfect square? It means that you can write it in a compact form raised to the second power. That's what I mean. If I were to expand this, if I were to expand it, this is what I will end up with. Okay, and that's what we're going to do next. How do we take something like this and write it in a compact form like that so that we can later use the square root property? That's what we're going to work on next because using this square root property is not that bad. It's going to take some practice, but it's easy. The problem is, what if you're given something like this and you have to write it in this form so that you can later use the square root property to solve it okay so now that's what i'm going to do next so here is an example here's an example suppose i give you this and i'm going to give a blank space that blank space, I'm going to cook up a number. I'm going to cook a number, cooking a number. How do I cook up a number? That number, once I put it in there, it's going to transform this trinomial. Why do I call it trinomial? Because it has three parts, one, two, and three. It happens to be a quadratic trinomial. Once I have a number there, and I'm going to show you step by step how I get that magical number. Then once I have that number, then I'm going to be able to write this trinomial in a very compact form like that. Okay, so this is how you cook up a number. You take this number four. That is, you always take the coefficient. What's a coefficient? It's the number next to a variable. That's what a coefficient means, okay? Coefficient is the number that multiplies the variable. Then I take that four and I divide it by two and I square it. So what do I end up with? I end up with a four. So this four is the number that will go in this space okay that's where it will go now that i have that number this is a perfect square how is so here it is so what you do is you open up parentheses you put a square okay now we're going to work on what to write inside the parentheses 
And this is the part where you have to pay attention, okay? You see this x squared? Instead of writing x squared inside the parentheses, we're just gonna write x. Let me repeat that again. You see this x squared? Inside the parentheses, we're just gonna write x. Why? Because this will eventually will become x squared again because I have the square outside. The, the sign that follows here, notice that I had a sign here, is inherited by whatever the sign of this is. If this is a plus, then it will be a plus here. If that would have been a minus, then it would be a minus there. Okay. Then we have to put some number here. The number that goes here will be the square root of four which is two, there it is, okay? So again, the number that goes here will be whatever this is, but take the square root of it, here it is. So what am I saying? I'm saying that if I were to expand this, I will get this back this whole thing back. So let me show you. There it is, you see? This is where I had, and through this process, I was able to write it like this. All I did here was foil, okay? So this here is called completing the square. In other words, it's not complete yet, and you're generating this number that I show you how to cook, so that once you put that number in, then it becomes a perfect square. This is a perfect square. Okay, let's do another one. There, okay, there. In fact, let me do a minus so you can see that. So you see the difference, no big deal. So how do we do that? All right, so here we're gonna cook up a number. We take the coefficient of x. Remember you have x and you have x squared. So when I say take the coefficient of x, doesn't mean x squared, it means this x. All right, so negative six divided by two squared. So you get what? Nine. That's the new magical number, nine. Okay. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention, you always divide by two, always, always by two, by two, by two, by two, okay? Now by three, by four, by two, you take the coefficient of x and you divide it by two and you square it. That's the recipe for cooking up that number. All right, so that number turned out to be nine. Now that I have that number, what do I do next? I open a parenthesis, I square it. And then I need to work on what to put in inside the square, inside the parenthesis. Here it is. Instead of having x squared, I just put x. The sign that follows comes from this guy. You see this guy now is negative, so it will be negative here. And then the number that follows, how do I get that number? You take the square root of nine and you get three and you're done. This is the same as this, okay? Remember, this is completing, completing, the square. Okay, that's what that means. Let's do another one. Let's do. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm thinking x square minus 10x plus whatever. 
we need that to fill in the blank. Okay, fill in the blank. All right, so let's do this fast. The coefficient of x is negative 10. What are you going to do? You're going to divide it by 2 and you're going to square it. What do you get? Negative 5 squared is 25. So this number goes here. Done. What do I do next? I open parentheses and I square it. Don't forget to square it. That's why I do that first, because when I was a student, I will do the inside correctly. But for some reason, because I was going too fast, I will forget to write the square outside the parentheses. All right, so what do I do, what do, I do next um, inside the parentheses? Instead of writing x, you just, instead of writing x squared, you just write x. The, the, the side that follows comes from this guy. So this is negative, so this will be negative. And the number, the last number you write inside the parentheses will be the square root of 25 is 5. And that's it. There it is. This is what you're going to do on Alex. It's going to ask you, what number goes there to make this a perfect square? And that's it. OK, pay attention. Pay attention to details. Again, why did I write a minus and not a plus? Here, a minus, because this is a minus. They have to be the same. Okay, and that's it. Let's do another one. Okay, notice that I'm using y, it doesn't matter what variable I use. Okay, I just use 2 divided by 2 squared, I get 1. Then I, I write the parentheses, square, y, this time is a plus, so I put out a plus. What is the square root of 1? 1. There. Done. You see how that is? That's very easy. All right. So now I'm going to show you how to solve uh, an equation using this technique. Suppose you have this. Uh, let's say you have hmm, equals to 5, something like that, okay? Something like that. All righty, all righty. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, okay? So let's do this. First thing you're going to do is this. You're going to create the little space that little space that we, we've been working on. Notice that I didn't do anything to the file. I just rewrote it, OK? And I left it on the right-hand side. Now, quickly here, you know that you're going to take the 4 divided by 2, square it. It gives you 4. 4. All right, now pay attention to this. I added a 4 on the left-hand side. At this very moment, I have lost my equation. I lost it. Why? Because I put more weight on the left-hand side, and I didn't put anything yet on the right-hand side to keep the equation. So logically, I have to do the same on the other side to keep the balance. Okay? To keep the equation, you have to do the same. So, of course, here I get 9. Here, what do I have? I have x plus 2 squared. Did I do that too fast? Let me remind you. Instead of writing x squared, you write x. The, this here tells you what the next sign is. And the square root of 4 is 2. There it is. A square. So now, now, I can use the square root property, which is like, this is what I, that I did before, okay? So how do I do that? Take the square root of both sides. Okay. This cancels. All you have left is x, two, x plus 2 plus or minus square root of 9. But you know that is plus or minus 3. Now, where did this negative 2 come from? I moved this guy to the other side. Okay. 
Now here you're going to get two answers. Notice that there's no I. So that you're going to get two real solutions. Here's the first one. One. That's one of the solutions. The other one, let's do it if I can do it here. Negative two minus three. So it will be negative five. Negative five. So you have x equals one and x equals to negative five. Those are the two solutions that you get out of this problem. But there were two things involved. First, you had an equation. Here, this was not an equation. This is just practicing how to complete the square. Here, you have an equation where I, all I did first, I moved and I created this little space. That little space is where I put in that magical number to make it a perfect square. Make it a perfect square on the left-hand side. But I also added a four on the right on the right hand side. And I also to keep the equality, because if you don't write this four here, you, you made a mistake. You have think of it in equation as a balance, as a scale. If you put four pounds on one side and you want to keep the balance the same, you have to put four pounds on the other side. That's what I did. Okay. Then here on the left hand side, I completed the square. Then I took the square root property and that is where it led me to this. So it's a bunch of steps. All right, let's do one more. There, let's do this. First, create a little space. Uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I got 9 plus 9. So here's 19. This guy is equals to x plus 3 squared. You should know by now where I got all those numbers from. If you don't know, then look at the video, the recording again. Then I take the square, the square root property. There it is. Now notice that I, I end up with a plus or minus root of 19. Let's leave it like that. Let's not even touch it. And I solve for x. I move the 3 over. It becomes negative 3. Plus or minus root of 19. Don't forget that here you have two solutions. This is one of them. Here's the other one. And that's it. This is how you do this. Okay. So I'm going to end the recording now. And I hope that you watch the whole thing. And I hope that you take notes. And I hope that something sinks in. Um, because I did a bunch of exercises. I did 14. Uh, and I took the time to explain everything where I got everything. So I hope this actually works. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Thank you.